Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen, and yes, love is in the air. Love is in the air. Um, we're doing Valentine's Day cards. Super, super easy. Two different wet on wet techniques. One simple washing and blending color into color. And this one's a little more involved where we're taking an outline and blending it in wet on wet. So it's wet on wet, you start off wet on dry, then do wet on wet. If you have any questions please leave them in the comment section if you're struggling with wet on wet this is a great exercise to play with um, if you haven't done watercolor before they're very easy I'm telling you if you can draw a heart and paint an outline and just blend with your brush um, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and if you haven't hit that bell notification button please do so so you know when my tutorials are up also check out my patreon at ad free videos traceables exclusive tutorials on thursdays that are longer than than they are on youtube some are like an hour long and a live stream in the top tier it's just a place people go and support my channel which i appreciate so much so without further ado let's get on the love and start painting some valentines okay so for this exercise for this tutorial go over supplies i'm using two pieces of arch 100 percent cotton cold pressed paper you know, like I use for the cards all the time. I use them. It's like a four by six. And then you can just put them on a piece of cardstock like that. So it's cheaper. Otherwise, you know, I don't know, just spray them and stick them in a, in a different type of envelope. Um, so I have two here and I'll be using the masking fluid. This is PBO drawing gum masking fluid. It's like $4. You can get it on my supply list there. Um, my palette here, I go, over the, I go over the paints as I use them, I'm mostly using reds and pinks and things like that. For the masking fluid, use kind of a cheap kind of brush. You don't want to use a nice brush. And then we'll be playing around with using brushes. I'll be using my Princeton 8 Long Round. For this particular exercise, I'll be using bigger brushes, even my 12 Aqua Elite. So this should be really simple and fun way to play with color and masking fluid. If you have never used masking fluid, this would be a great exercise to use it. So for the first one, you know, don't worry about if your writing is terrible. That's the whole fun is that it doesn't matter. Just writing the word love and you're just gonna write the word love like all over the paper, right? And you can make it thick and thin. So L, L, let's see if I can get this better. <laughs> B, E, see mine isn't that great. And masking food is like plastic, right? Now you want to kind of space them out, the loves, and they could be bigger or smaller. So I'm just doing like L-O-V here. See? And you can make it even bigger, L. It doesn't matter. So kind of space them out like you would here. See how I'm doing the spacing these out? L-O-V-E. Now over here, you have to figure out the E would be here. So we can do backwards. <laughs> if that helps you. If it helps to like draw out the word first, do that and then erase it. It doesn't even matter if you don't have to erase it. Just draw out the word. You know, if you just write out, take like a, just a little number two H pencil. So then you can just write out the E and the V and the O where they go. E, the V, and, you know, that might be easier for you. Like I said, this is not like, something that I have to worry too much about. I'm loosely writing it out. And we're just gonna masking fluid over those. You know, this is just a great exercise in playing with masking fluid. One thing to note, although I usually stick it in a, a smaller little, you know, palette, one of those cheap little palettes, because it dries up fairly quickly. And if you're keeping it open like this, don't do what I'm doing, um, but I'm gonna go pretty fast. Um, if you're doing it slowly, you don't want to keep it open like this for too long. You're kind of wrecking your masking fluid. Don't shake it up also. Just let it settle and do your little words. So you see, all my words are not perfect. Some are really goofy. You know, it doesn't matter. This is just going to be a fun, wet on wet kind of exercise. Just going around, like so, an all over words of love, love, <laughs> love will keep us together. I don't, <clears throat> I don't sing, obviously. <laughs> uh, here we go. That is not my talent. 
And you can tell. Some, I'm sure some people here have that talent. That is not one of mine. Although I do love and enjoy singing. Okay. And then I would even go up the top of the page here so you could do a oh, kind of big peeking off the page. You know, like you meant intended it to be there. It's up to you. You don't have to do what I'm doing. So it looks like an all over kind of situation. So now you really have to let this dry. And it's, you know when it's dry, when it's a little tacky to the finger, like right now it's super wet. And it feels, I'm going over some of my letters a little bit here with the excess stuff here. So when it starts to feel a little tacky, like it's sticking to your finger, then it's dry. Obviously right now it's super wet. Voila. So really anybody can do this. You can pencil in the words love and just trace the move with your masking fluid. And then we're gonna do some simple washing in wet on wet color. This is like the super easiest fun card to do. So I'm gonna let this dry and we'll come back. Bye masking fluid. Okay, so now it's dry because I can feel it's very sticky to my finger. And now we're just gonna mix up whatever colors you want. It could be pink and purple. Just loosely here, I'm taking my big brush here. I've got this opera color, which is insane, bright neon pink here. And then I have bright rose, just a little subtle pink. Still kind of similar, right? This might, the the rose actually has a purple tint to it. I have actually cadmium red light. This paint is a little pricey because it's a cadmium, and anything that's cadmium is always pricey. This is like a real red red, like a tomato red. And then I have magenta right here, quinacridone magenta. Right, get a bunch of these colors really loose though. The magenta is great, nice deep deep pink. So I'm going to get my, and you can mix the colors. This opera color is just crazy neon. It's fantastic. If you want to put a little gold in, put a little gold in. That could be really pretty. And you, like I said, you could add little purples. So for purple, it's great ultramarine blue. You can see it over here. And the magenta, opera, whatever color you have that's pink, that's bright. You can make a nice purple. This looks now, because of this, before, it didn't look so bad as a red. Now with the purple, it looks like orange, doesn't it? You see how that happens? So maybe I'd add a little magenta to this red to get it more of a red, like cherry, to, cherry tomato red, so it doesn't look so, see now it looks like a nice red. <clears throat> Next to the purple before, it was looking like orange. So we're gonna play around with moving colors around. If you want to start off just putting water down, you could do that or add color. So I'm just gonna put some water, go a little crazy, start adding in some color. Ooh, opera, get this really loose. You can blend in some of this beautiful red. So I'm gonna go back in and add some water, clean off my brush, just get some water on here. Just putting water across the whole thing. So the love is going to resist, obviously. <clears throat> it's that bright pinky red. You want to put the purple in. Purple's kind of pretty, huh? You can grab some of that blue, stick that in there. Ooh, I like this. It's kind of like a rainbow. Didn't even intend for that to happen, but guess what? It did. So happy accidents. That's why I love doing real-time tutorials. You're going to see what it's like with me. I like the blue there. Um, go back and grab this pink opera, mixing in with some red. It's so intense. Watch look at that. Woohoo! That pink is so great. You can water this colors down a little bit over here. Look at that red. Now I'm just going to take my brush, water it down a little bit up in here. Now you could add the gold, like I said. I'm kind of mushing this paint around. Kind of like a stripey um, kind of situation going on here. I'm gonna a little pink, purple. Okay, there's more purple, deeper purple down in here. I 
we can add a little purple stripe you can be look I don't know if I want to do that I might take that back out but you play around with this and let's see how the gold would look this is gold <clears throat> watercolor I also have gold ink but it's dried out so of course this is kind of tightly dried try and get this paint out it doesn't want to cooperate there we go so I'll loosen up some of the gold you want it kind of thick though almost like right out of tube minimal water so I'm gonna loosen up a little bit but not too much I want it nice and thick so it has some kind of resist to it so the gold is kind of pretty I don't want it super watered down You can even splatter it a little bit or splatter your paint. I like that. A little gold. It's up to you. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice again. My voice is so crazy since I've had that, what do you call it? Flu A. <laughs> crazy flu is that what I call it. I'm going to put this opera back in. I want a little bit deeper. And maybe I'll maybe I'd keep the purple down there or maybe I'll add a little purple up here let's see change it up a little bit so it's more of like a magenta purple but just really simple put a little colors in there it depends on how you want it to do so that was really five seconds right you have to wait till it all dries and then we're going to remove the masking fluid and we'll have the words and this fun funky stuff in the background now if you, I did kind of stripes you could do circles you know you can get really creative with it I'm gonna go back and get this a little bit thicker I want my purple to really be purple purple down the bottom here deep dark mysterious color I can put a little darker up here too yeah a little different all right I don't want to fuss with it too much we're gonna let that guy dry and we're gonna come back and remove the colors. I mean the uh, masking fluid. So we're gonna move on to the next card. I gotta flip my paper because look how wet that is. <laughs> Just take this. If I flip it on my nice paper. Okay. <clears throat> so for this one, <clears throat> we're gonna get a little more, we're gonna use some effort, more effort, right? That was super easy. We'll get a little bit harder. We're gonna just draw hearts, right? Let me zoom in a little bit. I have a few H pencil. They could be on their side, they could be straightforward. I'm gonna just take the paper and just turn it like just a little bit, you know, like a little half, and then draw the hearts that way. They could be in a row, and they can be bigger or small. I'm gonna get my kneaded eraser. why I tilted the paper so I kind of want them on an angle see that actually didn't work that way <laughs> well might be easy to draw it on an angle this way I draw it on an angle okay so we're gonna draw the hearts on an angle I just thought it was easy for me to tilt it but then just stand here and draw it drying try, try to draw it Tilted on the straightforward, it's a little bit easier to draw it this way. Just simple hearts in a row. I don't want this to be showing too much. Again, it's like coming off the paper. Every other space. Have them kind of leaning on their side. So you can look straight forward. They're kind of leaning going this way on a diagonal. If it helps you to draw a diagonal line, do that. So if it helps you to draw a line that goes down like this, like this, that will help also. See, those are super leaning. This one, I mine is slightly leaning. So if that makes any sense, they're slightly leaning. Subtle, subtlety. But there's different ways to help you keep it kind of that way. Okay. Now I'm going to erase all these little doodad lines that I had because I really don't want to show them. So 
So what we used to call this in my field of work, we call these like all over prints, you know, the prints that kind of go all over the page. This one's a leaning a little more than that one. I'm going to fix this one. And you can make yours bigger. Mine are pretty spaced out. I'm going to try and fix this. So I'm going to fix my hearts and then come back. All right, so I drew my hearts. Like, you know, just take your time drawing your hearts. If you want to do tracing paper first and then go back in and just trace it that way, it makes my life much easier. So the colors should be pinks and reds. And we're going to use like a shadow on the bottom here of just like an ultramarine blue, like they're just sitting on a shadow, kind of like little bubble hearts, right? So you might even take your Princeton eight long round. And I'm not going to show every single painting because you'll go crazy of me painting every single heart. But grab whatever color you want that's pink or red. You start off with a consistency of like butter, like basically right out of the tube. I'm trying to grab that. So I'll do my opera here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. All right, you need enough, you need to be able to move the paint too though. So you're kind of doing an outline. Slightly outline here. All right, and then we're gonna clean off our brush. Keep water on our brush. We're gonna push this paint in. See, I'm moving it around, moving it around. Paper towel close by. Now I've shown many times how to do this with other things. Um, in my recent uh, Patreon, I had kind of like a show that, you know, when you do wet on wet like this, this is how you move the paint around. Now you can move it this way, wet on dry. I'm tapping my brush back on the paper towel, getting it clean, removing it, and just blending. I'm leaving a little white halo right here. See? A little white halo, I call them. Now my heart is not smooth. I'm trying to fix the edges here. So it looks like a little bubble. And you can go back in and add a little deep color on the edge while it's still damp. Just tippy tap right in here. Do, do, do. So little bubbles. Floating bubbles. See that? This is the wet on wet technique also. It's just a different type of wet engine. So if it starts to have a hard edge, take off some of the paint, clean off your brush, and just kind of move it around with the clear brush. So it blends nice and smooth. Now we're gonna have gouache close by, white gouache. So if we didn't do little white halos on the edges here, we'll put them in later. This is simple little bubble, All right? And you can do that with all the colors that you had. Um, is that red color that I had here and the purple as long as it's in that blue we're good and you have to do all your little bubbles I'm gonna make this red a little bit thicker my little red is looking a little sad there we go a little thicker with the paint again why we do this and then water in the like wash in the water. Um, unless you want to put masking fluid here, you can do wet on wet that way. I'll show you another technique. You can try it the other way too. But it's much harder to control the center bubble, little halo, the other way. So I'm kind of moving this paint around. I'm gonna go back in with the red. It looks a little too pink. A deep red. See that? Just blending that in. Tippy taps. Keeping that white halo there. Smoothing out my edges. Little bubble. Wet on wet. This is a great way to practice wet on wet. So I'll do the purple. So we had purple here. Purple. So blue, I use uh, ultramarine blue in opera, but you can use ultramarine blue in magenta. It makes a great purple. Really deep, look at that. Just outline your heart. By the way, none of my hearts are the same. 
if you notice that. <laughs> and I'll grab some water and I'll mush that paint around. I'll leave a white halo right there. All the halos won't be perfect either. And I'll mush this paint around. Mush it, clean up my brush again. Grab some water, just a little bit of water, not a lot. And there we go, just kind of blending. This is a great practice for wet on wet and blending. That one's like probably perfect for me. <laughs> you get better as you go, you know? This one I would have had maybe a little bit darker. This is what happens when it's dry, you want to go back in. So you can go back in, right? And do it again. Here's the darker pink. And just grab the water again after that's done. And blend it. So you can go over it, it's glazing. And do it again. If it came out too light, grab that water and move it around and boom. So do that with all your hearts and we'll come back and we'll do a nice little blue shadow and you'll see how cool that is and we'll add some more uh, white halos in. Okay, so once you finish all your little hearts, I still see some of my um, pencil line, but you know, you can erase that when it's dry. Get all those little lines out of there. On some of them, I went a little bit lighter on the right side. Doesn't really matter. Yes or no. Um, you play around with that. And I'm just going to take some ultramarine blue. Gonna water this down a little bit. Might add a little bit of uh, Payne's gray. So I want it like a bluish gray. And I'm gonna test it. Uh, I'm gonna grab a little scrap here. Let's see if I like the color next to it. It's a little test piece. It looks kind of like the purple. It's not gonna look good with that. So I'm gonna go back in and just maybe keep it ultramarine blue or I could grab a cobalt. Let's see how the blue would look. These are like little tests that I do. Or if you wanted just to do the gray, the pan's gray itself, we could do that also. I kind of kind of want to keep it bright and light. Mm, I don't know if I like the gray. So I'm going for it <clears throat> with my ultramarine blue, watering it down. Okay, I'm just going to put a line here. And I'm going to put a shadow here. See? A little bit next to the bottom on the left side. So let me zoom in so you can see. Go really tight and then pull it out a little bit. And then curve here. That's our little shadow. If we get a little bit darker, we could play around with that. Let's see. Mm, do I like it that dark? No. Maybe I'd add a little darker, kind of going right there. Playing around with it. Or the gray. See, I'm doing all this stuff for you, so you don't have to. Give you add a little gray to that. So maybe that was not so bad. If I have the blue, maybe make this one a little bluer than the purple. So it's the shadow coming out. And same thing on the red, a little line here, curve it like three fourths the way up and then connect them. Isn't that cute? Down here. So <clears throat> I decided that the blue with the gray was good. You'll figure out the color that you like the best. It could be more gray if you want it to be. Just one slightly different than the purple that we had. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is my voice again. See, if I make it a little bit darker under here, you really get a shadow. 
I'm playing around with that. See if I like it. Hmm. Maybe a little bit darker as it's still damp in some sections. It's up to you. It's just one way of doing it. Now you could have it really light. See, I'm going to make this lighter, a lighter shadow. Mine, this one's pale from compared to the other ones. This one's pretty dark. If I want to make them a little bit lighter, I can lift up some of the paint. Maybe I like that one better. And then maybe I'd put in a little thicker, darker tone just right under the heart. So I'm playing around with the shadow on this one. And then you're going to, of course, go through all of them and do that together. I'm just going to go really quick with some of these down here. It looks kind of cool, right? It's just an idea. You don't even have to do any of this. Just trying to put the shadow on pretty quickly. This little heart needs a little fixing. I'll fix it. It's a little sad. But we will fix you. Just go right in there. The shadow. So like I said, if you have white gouache and you messed up and you didn't leave a halo, just take some white gouache. <clears throat> you just have to water it down just a teeny bit just so it moves. You want to keep it kind of opaque. So I had a little halo. You can add little little dashes too to make it more like a bubble. Fix my little halo here. See? Uh, fix your little halo with the gouache if you messed up. Add a little side. So it looks more like a bubble. And I'll fix this one. A little side one here. Isn't that cute? And then you could write words in between if you wanted to. Voila. So going back to our first guy, it should be dry by now. See how they nicely coordinate because of the colors? It's kind of pretty, right? So you just take a rubber cement pickup. That's what they call those. I have that in my um, shop my supplies list. They're like four bucks. Great. And now you just remove your words. Love. This is a little elbow grease. <laughs> to get this off. This is the best tool to get the rubber cement off. I'm not kidding. You can try other things. It will not work as well as this sucker. And it's four bucks and you'll have it forever. And it's the best thing. Just hold it down a little tight and just kind of push it. I mean, you can do one word in the middle with this. You don't even have to write love. You can write someone's name. You know, you can write be mine, all those things. Isn't that cool? So yeah, and then you just put it on a card stock, you know, for your card. I'm gonna grab another piece of red for my other card. And then we have some Valentine's Day card ideas. Simple little heart bubbles. You could do big ones and tiny ones. You can write the word love in between you know, get creative. I'm just giving you ideas to figure out, you know, this is the easiest one ever. This one's take a little more time. So intermediate, super easy, it's depending on your skill level. And then you can do so many different things with this. You could do the words and had all kinds of like really loose flowers in the background. You name it. It could have just been a bunch of balloons in the background. Think outside the box, guys. So I hope this was fun. I hope you had a great time. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And just enjoy with the colors, you know, wet on wet techniques on both of them. Just 
One's super easy, just blending into each other. And one is a little more technical involved where you're moving the paint around, but very doable and very easy. So thank you guys for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button and take care and I'll speak to you soon.